This tutorial shows you Autopano Video, a video stitching program. You will discover a quick description of the software and its interface, as well as an example of its use to show you how to create your own 360 degree videos. When opening the program, you will discover that the interface is separated into five parts. The toolbar regroups the load and save features of your Autopano Video project. This part is the current library of the project, where it is possible to import your videos to Stitch, to synchronize the imported videos and start the stitching. The timeline in the centre allows you to define the time frame, the search area for audio synchronization, and tags for the beginning and end of the final render. At the bottom you can find a preview window showing the reference panoramas, allowing you to edit the project in Autopano Pro or Giga, or even import a project file from Autopano. Finally, this window shows the stitching preview, allows you to play the 360 video and start the final render. Let's import six videos shot with a rig mounted with six GoPro Hero 3 cameras attached to a pole. Once imported, they are shown in the input video source window. The first thing to do here is to synchronize the videos, since the six cameras were activated one at a time, so none of them start at the same moment. Click on the synchronize button and start the calculation. Autopano video isn't finding anything and shows us a warning message. This is completely normal, as the videos weren't activated at the same time. The research zone at the beginning of the timeline may be very small or even inexistent in certain video flows. The synchronization relies on the audio signal of the cameras, so it is important to start the calculation at a moment where there is some sound or at least a distinct audio signal. Move the principal cursor of the timeline to where you know there would be a potential audio signal, expand the research zone and start the calculation once again. Autopano video has now detected the audio signal and can now synchronize them. Now we can stitch the videos from the option Stitch As. For example, the videos were shot with GoPro cameras, so we will select Stitch As GoPro. Following the source videos, you can choose to stitch them as a project previously worked on, or by directly defining the values of your camera, focal length and type of lens. The stitching is done based on the current moment of the timeline, and appears at the bottom, in the reference panoramas window. Double click on the thumbnail to open the panorama in Autopano Pro or Giga. This step allows you to check the stitching, the position of the different video flows, and most importantly, correct the horizon of the panorama. Here, a simple rotation of 90 degrees is needed to retrieve the horizon, and it is possible to adjust it more accurately with the move mode. When the result is satisfying enough, save the project, it is automatically updated in Autopano video. Finally, you may start the render of the 360 degree video by clicking on the render button. A settings window will pop up. This window will allow you to select the type of encoding, output size, and the number of frames per second of the final video. The size of the current video is approximately 5000 by 3000 pixels. The encoding preset by default is the preset best of H.264, which uses the best of all H.264 presets available in Autopano video, which will determine the size of the rendered video. By default, Autopano video will render the 360 video as 4K because it isn't possible to render it bigger than 5000 by 3000 and that its current size isn't a video standard. For example, if you want to render the video in Full HD, which is a 1920 by 1080 pixels, you will have to use the preset H.264 High. You can also render the video at its original size or the size of your choice. To do so, you have to check the option Frames, as well as the MP4 option in the Export setting, and adjust the size of the project. This will give you an MP4 file using the preset settings and all the images, depending on the value set in the FPS field, corresponding to the format of your choice. The blending parameters allow you to choose the blending type to apply during the stitching, and you have the choice between smooth and sharp mask. For a video with lots of movement, it is best to use the smooth preset, which will give a very good final result, but with less grain than with the other preset. If the video doesn't have too much sudden movement, you can use the Sharp Mask Blending preset. Click OK to start the rendering. You can also decide to start the rendering later by adding the project to the batch rendering list to continue working on other projects, for example. Here is the final result of our 360 video. 